If yours is one, two, three, four, five, six, or your birthday, you could be in for a rude awakening when hackers or their robots guess it and access your online life. Passwords in this digital age are as important as they can be annoying. So let's get some help on what makes for a good one from Melody Lay. She's an information security consultant. And Melody, we are delighted that you are making your television debut here on this program tonight. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much for joining us. Start, what makes for a good password? So there's two main things that make for a good password. Um, one is length. You want it to be basically as long as possible. Um, and the other is randomness. Um, so as random as possible, because humans are great at making patterns, and so that makes passwords easier to guess when you use patterns. Randomness in terms of letters, numbers, symbols, that kind of thing? Yep, definitely. Well, that's, uh, it's good to have a mix of you know, lowercase, uppercase, symbols, numbers. Um, but as you said, not using things like your birthday, or one, two, three, four, five, or even patterns on the keyboard. What kind of smartphone do you have? I have an Apple iPhone. OK, what's the password? <laughs> well, I'm you're not going to trick me into that one. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if you practice what you preach. <laughs> I do. I have a sufficiently long and random password <laughs> on that one. <laughs> okay. Are strong passwords, as you have described them, inherently impossible to remember? I wouldn't say they're impossible to remember. Um, there's some tricks that you can use for making a password that's easy to remember. So for instance, you could do something like take the first line of your favorite song. Um, Something like... Start spreading the news? Sure. That's you might want long. a longer one. No, a you longer? want a longer one. Okay. So let's say, like, you used to call me on my cell phone. <laughs> Take the first letter of every word. Um, so you know the phrase, right? Oh, okay, but when you're right. typing it out, you just type the first letter of every word. Hmm. Uh, throw in some numbers, capital letters, symbols, and then you've got a nice, sufficiently long password that you can remember. Um, the only problem is you might be singing that song for the rest of the <laughs> no. day once you've logged in. <laughs> Let the record show I pick Sinatra and you pick Drake, so I win. <laughs> Sorry, Drake, but, you know, Frank's the man. <laughs> How often should one change one's password? Uh, it's an interesting question because the, the traditional thinking used to be that you should change it every 30 to 180 days. Um, but nowadays, there's been studies that show that having to change your password actually makes people choose weaker passwords. Huh. So the new school of thought is you don't really have to change your password, but make it long and strong enough to begin with and use other features um, that sites these days have that help you protect your passwords. So, okay, what does that mean? So things like um, nowadays a lot of sites, they have something called two-factor authentication. Say it again? Two-factor authentication. Okay, what does that mean? Um, so you'll have like a uh, a token that's either like sort of an app that's installed on your phone mm -hmm. or maybe even like an actual token and it'll have a rotating like six digit number on it. So that's a second factor because because that digit, that pin is rotating, someone has to physically have that with them hmm. in order to log into your account. So it's a, if, even if they guessed your password, if they don't have that token, they still can't log the in. The token, which is a digital thing that has a constantly changing number every minute or so. Exactly. I mean, we use those kind of things here, yeah. but um, you know, we're a sort of reputable, established business here, company. Uh, do regular people have these tokens? Yep, you can download them to your phone, as I was saying. So hmm. um, Google has a product called Google Authenticator, which is just an app that sits on your phone, and it does the same thing. It rotates six digits hmm. for you. So it's like a double layer of security in some respects. Exactly. OK. How wise is it to use, say, the same password for your Gmail account, your work account, your bank account, your whatever? You know, the list goes on. Yeah, so that's the number one no-no, is that you shouldn't reuse your passwords. Um, you should have a unique password for every single site. For every single thing? Yeah, and that's the problem. So it's not hard to make a password you can remember, mm -hmm. but when you have 100 passwords you have to remember, then it starts to get difficult. No, that doesn't start to get difficult, <laughs> Melody. That starts to get impossible. Who can remember 100 different really strong passwords? Yeah, it's true. Um, so then what we recommend is to use a password manager. And what is that? So a password manager is software that um, it basically stores all your passwords for you securely. So you'll have a master password that you have to remember in order to access 
what's in your password manager, but that's the one password you have to remember, and then it's storing everything else for you. So you remember that one, pa and that's on your device, I guess, eh? Is that right? The password uh, manager? You can have it on your computer, you can have it on your device, you can even sync between the two. Huh. So if you remember the one password that opens up that door to 100 other passwords, now mind you, I mean, what if somebody else finds your one password manager password, then they've got access to everything, don't they? Yeah, exactly. So it can be a single point of failure that way. But if the alternative is that you're going to make poor passwords or you're going to be writing them on sticky notes, then it's better to use the password manager and just be really careful about guarding that one password really well. How do you know if the password manager is safe? Um, you raise a good point. <laughs> uh, there have been vulnerabilities found in password managers. Um, I would say that generally, if it's a company that's been around for a while, they have a lot of users. Um, even if a vulnerability is found in it, they'll fix it quickly. Hmm. Um, so you should keep it updated. Make sure you know you subscribe to those updates of if something if there's a patch that needs to be installed, um, and then you're generally okay. Okay, let's finish up on this. Uh, every time I put a password in you know, a new one to a new site for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it always asks me, do you want to save this password on this site? Right. I'm not going to tell you what I do, but you tell me what I should be doing. Um, it's okay to use those. Again... It's okay to save it on the site? Uh, yeah. So what mm -hmm. you're actually doing is you're saving it in your browser. Yes. So it's like having... It's using your browser's built-in password managers. So same thing as the other password managers. Like, there's a potential for... Um, there to be a problem with it. But again, if the alternative is you're making insecure passwords, then it's better to just use the browser's password manager. Gotcha. You sure I can't get that password out of you, eh? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Melody, that was very helpful. Thank you very much. That's Melody Lay, Information Security Consultant. It's my pleasure. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.